unlocked. Celebration on for Kansas City again. Repeat champions with a three-time Super Bowl MVP quarterback and a team scoring touchdowns where the player receiving it didn't even know he just won the whole thing. Go crazy, B. Cole. The NFL's 2023 season ends with a creeping reality. Patrick Mahomes is inevitable. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with strategy. Al Shanahan's decision in overtime to take the ball. Romo on the telecast questioned it, but then thought about how tired the defense must have been. Came to the conclusion it was a tough call. That's understandable, but well, around the horn to you. Did this game come down to, and did Kyle Shanahan miscalculate in his decision to receive the ball first and give Mahomes the ball second? Did not come down to that. There were bigger problems for the Niners in overtime. Uh, you talk to the analytics people around the NFL, they don't have strong opinions about this case yet. The Niners analytics people apparently think the benefit is getting the third possession of the game, where you can win without having to give the ball back to the other team and figuring, okay, if we score a touchdown on our opening drive, which the Niners came close to doing, you put the other team in such a vulnerable position, they either have to go for two or score a touchdown give you the ball back, and hope that they can stop you from getting a field goal to win the game. To me, the bigger problem was what happened on that third and four from the nine-yard line. Brandon Ayuk gets wide open for what should have been a touchdown to put all the pressure on the Chiefs, but the Niners' pass protection forgot to block, of all people, Chris Jones, the best player on the field, the guy who should have won MVP, was left totally unblocked, mm. blew up the play. The Niners will well, not There's a little bit of a hot take from our Bill Barnwell as well. Okay. So this came down to Chris Jones for you. Didn't come down to the decision in overtime to receive the ball. Marcel, I'll ask it to you around the horn on Shanahan's decision to receive. Was it a miscalculation? <sighs> I, I think it was, Tony. It almost feels like he's trying to outsmart the situation. Yes, you can win the game with that third possession, but do you know when else you can win the game? On the second possession. And that's what the Chiefs had planned to do ever since training camp in July. They said if they get to this moment in the Super Bowl and the other team scores first, they're going for two and they're going to try to end the game as efficiently as possible. And it, it, There is a lot of pressure on that defense or on the other team if you score a touchdown on the opening drive. But if you fail to score, there's also a ton of pressure on your defense to stop them from even getting into field goal range. So I think the Chiefs had a more decisive game plan going into this. And there's something to be said about players entering that situation, knowing exactly what the plan was. When you listen to the Niners players after the game, Kyle Juszczyk and Eric Armstead, they had no idea even what the rules were mm. for this new overtime in the Super Bowl. So that level of uncertainty, you know, ends in a result like we just saw on Sunday. Gordy Cronin, was this game decided on Shanahan's decision to start overtime? No, but these rules, these new playoff overtime rules, read like the college football overtime rules, where you want to possess the ball second so you can then know what to do based on what your opponent does on their possession. Playing for that third possession, as Kyle Shanahan talked about, is a pretty risky gamble when Patrick Mahomes had led the Chiefs back from a 10-point deficit, had two game-tying drives, and his own defense looked pretty gassed out there. The bigger issue here is what's happened in the second half of games where Kyle Shanahan has been the play caller in Super Bowls over the course of his career. Outscored 29-74 to 74 in the second half in overtimes mm. in three Super Bowls. And on top of that, the way that the defense played in the first half didn't look like the defense that was there in the second half in overtime. All right. So for you, this game came down to San Francisco's inability to close and Shanahan specifically his inability to close late in the game. Tim Kalashaw to you on this new overtime rule playing out on the biggest stage. Yeah, I mean, it was new for all of us, and it's new for the coaches, too. And I think over as we through the years, we'll see different decisions being made. It's still hard to pass up on getting the football. I think the third possession thing does make sense. And the other thing, if you're Kyle Shanahan, you're also thinking about you've watched. You know Patrick Mahomes is great. We all do. But you've watched him for 60 minutes. He has produced one touchdown, and it came after a punt hit one of your players in the foot. And, and Patrick Mahomes had to take mm. one play to score. There have been no 75-yard touchdown drives for the Chiefs all day. So why all of a sudden, just because the game is in overtime, 
Is he going to march down the field? Do you think Shanahan now, should I have felt confident that. in putting his defense out there against Patrick Mahomes in overtime of a Super it, Bowl? It, yeah, okay. if, he, if he doesn't have confidence in his own defense, and I know they lost Dre Greenlaw earlier Marcel, in the game. Marcel, you're shaking that, your head, huge. though. Look, if, if Michael Jordan missed his first 10 shots of the game and on the final possession <laughs> – you, are you going to leave him open just because he's been missing? It's Patrick <laughs> Mahomes. I don't care how he's played early in the game. I didn't say he's they still don't Mahomes. Need to, I didn't say they don't need to defend him. They don't need, they don't need to leave Travis Kelsey unguarded. They don't need to lead, leave uh, Hardman open in the end zone. He just had not seen the Chiefs do that. He believed in his defense. You know, it ended when, really, his team got stopped at the 10-yard line. You, you need to score a touchdown. And that is the play on that, that Bill Barnwell invoked. It didn't thing. happen. And his MVP, yeah. Super Bowl MVP, Chris Jones. Barnwell, that is a spicy yeah. take. That you're taking him over Patrick Mahomes? He was the best player on the field. He directly prevented two Niners touchdowns to wide open players with pressures on Brock Purdy. The Chiefs do not win that game if Chris well, Jones. Well, then is let's not talk the about not the best player on the field, Patrick Mahomes. This guy named Patrick Holmes, who was clearly not the best player on the More field. More than one guy can be good. Coronation day Just for Mahomes, better. let's say. Third title in his age 28th season. That's right there with Brady. Third MVP. On the trajectory. We're going with the trajectory here, uh, Anthony. And, yes, he, he is on the highest trajectory ever. If you go back to Brady after he had three Super Bowls, we didn't look at him as great as he already was becoming as the defining thing. In those games, with that Patriot defense, they usually had people who could run the ball well. They had a lot of things going for them. Mahomes has won the last two with what, through the regular season, tells us is the wide receiver core that drops the most passes and does not have a, an all-pro or even a pro bowl at wide receiver. Obviously, they have one at tight end. But what he does on, on fourth down in overtime, you got to make this play. Are you going to hand it to your running back? No, Mahomes is going to mm. run for it himself. He has... You know, I will agree with the Michael Jordan analysis Marcel made. That is the feel you have. This is a guy who will take charge and win a game. Gordy Cronin. I mean, the guy became a zone read quarterback when the game called for it in on a fourth and one and then picked up another 20 or 19 yards on a read. I mean, he is inevitable, like you said, Tony, and it, ma it matches the eye test as well as the stats that back up where Patrick Mahomes is at this point in his career versus where Tom Brady is, tying Tom Brady and the amount of Super Bowls that both of them got early on, but more playoff wins, more AFC titles than Brady by age 29. More MVPs at this point, 22 at 29. Brady has three over the course of his career. All of the regular season records. The trajectory is bright. The guy's not even 30 right, years so old. so it's not even a question How many for more you. years he has to play? Mm -hmm. Not even a question. He is on that trajectory if he's not already there Marcel. himself. He is on the, tra in the trajectory to be not only the most talented quarterback that we have ever seen, but the most successful quarterback we've seen at the NFL level. He is the fifth starting quarterback in NFL history with at least three Super Bowls, but he is the fastest athlete to win three championship game MVPs. And I say athlete, not football player, because this applies to every major American sport. He is unprecedented. When you look at just his playoff numbers, they are MVP caliber, 5,100 yards, 49 touchdowns, eight Interception. Right. I don't, I don't need the stats. We games. saw it with our eyes. But just so we're clear here, you had him as the MVP in yesterday's ball game, correct, Marcel? Oh, and yeah. And Courtney Cronin, absolutely. MVP in yesterday's ball game? And Tim Callishaw? I did go back and check the prediction. I didn't know I had a vote, but if I thought about it, I would vote. All right. So, Bill, I want you on Mahomes now, the question we asked before. Mahomes is incredible. And the resume is unprecedented through this point. First quarterback in history with three Super Bowl victories, four Super Bowl appearances through seven years. But what stands out to me is how Mahomes evolves, how he finds different ways to beat you. Last time they were playing the Niners, he was the mad bobber. He was chucking yeah. stuff up downfield. This year, he threw the shortest average pass of any quarterback in football because defenses are so terrified of him beating you downfield that they're daring him to take the easy stuff over and over and over again, and he continues to do so. He's a different quarterback now and a better quarterback than the guy. The evolution of his game and Kansas City's game was definitely evident in how this game played out. And now it's the first repeat for a franchise since the Patriots nearly 20 years ago. Andy Reid says, sure, for three. That's never been done before in the history of the game. Marcel, 
Is three peat a legit reality here? I think it's a legitimate reality because 15 is still under contract for next season. And as long as he is on the field, the Chiefs have a chance to win. They answered so many questions this year. Can they win on the road in the playoffs? Absolutely. They do so in Buffalo and in Baltimore against the MVP, Lamar Jackson. Can they win without Tyreek Hill in this bevy of plus uh, skill players? Absolutely. Rasheed Rice turned into the best receiver in the playoffs these past four games. Not to mention they had the second youngest defense of any Super Bowl champion, second only to last year's defense. Is that I right? think this is absolutely a dynasty. Courtney three, three Super Bowl wins in five years. It's a dynasty. Definitely a dynasty. This team may look different next year. Every team does. Travis Kelsey's 34 years old. Chris Jones is a pending UFA. But the way that they're constructed and the way that they have maximized their talent around around Patrick Mahomes, does it matter that the number one receiver in the NFL hasn't been on this team the last two seasons? They've won back-to-back Super Bowls. Does it matter that the rest of the AFC always feels like it's neck and neck with the Chiefs, only for the Chiefs to pull away? I know that Joe Burrow's coming back next year. I know Aaron Rodgers is coming back next year. If Patrick Mahomes is on the Chiefs, that team is going to be in the mix for a 3 You know, the only thing I think about, uh, getting back to Mr. Barnwell's, uh, speech earlier about Chris Jones. When the season opened at, against Detroit, Chris Jones was not on the team. He was a holdout. His price has not gone down. They're going to have to meet his price at some point and still sign some other players. But yes, Mahomes is going to be there. Kelsey's going to be there. Probably a better uh, or at least a healthier offensive line will be there. They have a great team. Bill, when you think about this team and, and the previous dynasties in league history, how do you view them? They're right up there. 1970s Steelers, early 90s Cowboys, and the early and end point runs of the Patriots are Brady and Belichick. Only teams to win three Super Bowls in five years. Chiefs are with them. We call those team dynasties. This is a dynasty. Take a break right here. More to come and buy or sell. Travis Kelsey, full of Andy. All good? That's a question I pose to you. Andy Reid jumping on Chris Jones with something as well. Uh, after the game. Well, he's one of the toughest coaches ever because he, he barely flinched at that hit and just kind of picked up his play card and, and went along. But as far as coaches, uh, Belichick is ahead of him. I guess Vince Lombardi, I'm going to still put him ahead of him. But he's in that Landry Shula class, and he's got more Super Bowl wins than they do. And he's done one of the really impossible things. He's, he's the most recent coach to win the NFC East back-to-back. So that tells you how long this guy has been a quality coach. Cody Cronin. He's taken Jeff Garcia and Alex Smith to the to the divisional round. Donovan Maynab to a Super Bowl. Six AFC title games and four Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes. Like, that body of work right there speaks for itself. It's the mind games that he plays with teams. The pre-snap motion that they use on that Hardman touchdown to win the game is the exact same pre-snap motion that they used to beat the Eagles last year. What can he do? Marcel Louis Jacques. Hey, he is excellent. He's one of the best of all times. Let's not let recency bias cloud our judgment here. Bill Belichick is still the greatest coach of all time. Eight Super Bowls as a coordinator and a head coach. But Mahomes said they're not done yet. He still doesn't have the Super Bowls yet. I think by the time everything is said and done, he could have five, six, seven, who knows? Then we'll have this conversation. We're having the conversation right now. Bill Barnwell, I turn to you. See, I, I said this last week. It's interesting that when we brought up New England, it was, is it Belichick or is it Brady? That does not happen with Kansas City, right? Everyone is, is willing to say it's Mahomes, it's Mahomes. How do you view Andy Reid today? Andy Reid is an incredible coach, and I've given him credit for two decades now, but I think we're leaving out an important part of the equation here in Steve Spagnuolo, right? I mean, a coach who's now won multiple Super Bowls with multiple franchises, who's come up and shut down four top ten offenses through this playoff run in a year where the Chiefs did not have their old explosive offense of years past. And it, think about the biggest plays in this game, right? When you're talking about Steve Spagnuolo, he's going to create free rushers, create pressure. What happened for the Chiefs and two of the biggest plays of the game, two free rushers, a knockdown, and a throw away. Steve Spagnuolo helped the Chiefs win. One of my favorite things after the Super Bowl, two minutes go by. Confetti back from commercial. You're not even sure what you're seeing. It's so fluky, you can't believe it. And the effect that had on the game, whether you think this game's different if Greenlaw plays the entirety in his failure to close. 
Brock Purdy's Super Bowl debut and what you saw there, Courtney Cronin. They should feel like this was a missed opportunity because they cruised to the one seed in a pretty top-heavy NFC, which may not be the case next year. But this is a learning experience about when to be great, like how to be great at the right time. Kyle Shanahan can wow you with his game plan and his play calls during the regular season, but every time we've seen him in the Super Bowl as a play caller, his team has blown double-digit leads. Maybe he follows the trajectory that his father, Mike Shanahan, was on and all of those early losses that he had as an assistant in Denver before winning back-to-back. -back. But right now, they've got to figure out the crux of the issue before they go any further. Marcel Louis Jacques. When you look at the Niners' upcoming free agents, it's Chase Young and Javon Kinlaw. Everybody else is still under contract. A team's best window to win a Super Bowl is when your rookie or your quarterback is on his rookie contract. They have maybe the best situation we have ever seen when Brock Purdy is the last pick of the draft. He can't even he can't negotiate a new contract until next season. They're going to be fine. This window is still open. Do you believe and still believe in Brock Purdy, of course, as the quarterback of this team that they could win a Super Bowl with? Bill Barnwell, what did you see from the quarterback yesterday? We saw a quarterback who made some plays but was not making the sort of fantastic out-of-structure plays that Mahomes made. And Kyle Shanahan knew he wanted that for this offense when they traded three first-round picks to acquire Trey Lance. Trey Lance didn't work out, but you have to imagine looking at the other side of the field, seeing a quarterback running the triple option on fourth and one to move to change. You got to figure he had at least had some wistful idea in his head. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe I wasn't seeing where you were going with that. So I, I saw a team go 74 minutes and 57 seconds and nearly win the Super Bowl here, and you thought they had some shortcomings at the quarterback position still? Jimmy Garoppolo missed a deep pass for a game-winning touchdown the last time these two teams played in the Super Bowl. Kyle Shanahan went out and invested in getting his Mahomes, getting his Josh Allen. He missed. He didn't get the guy he wanted. But, yes, I do think uh, that, that Trey Lance, yes, the, the Trey Lance that the Niners wanted Trey would have Lance. made more plays. Okay. Luck, luck, luck. And uh, Tim Kalashaw. Yeah, I think Brock Purdy showed in the second half of the Detroit game what he can do. He showed yesterday he has a team that scored in overtime in the Super Bowl, so I think he can be enough. The 49ers are still great, as Marcel said. they got a couple years left where they're not paying pretty much, and that roster is intact. Cody Crone and Marcel Louis Jacques. Around the horn rolls on and showdown next. Bonus show today means only one showdown, and you know it's halftime. Usher and friends, take a guess how many songs played in the medley here for Super Bowl halftime. Anybody? 14. 14. Oh, I heard you, Courtney, right at the back end. There you go. So I want you to grade the performance and where it lands all time, CC. I won't give you a grade, Tony, but Rihanna performed the, per performed the Super Bowl pregnant last year. This year, all of us watching Usher take his shirt off in the middle of his performance, skating on skates, we all got Okay, pregnant. settled. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Go ahead, Marcel. It's a family show, Courtney. I, I would give it a solid B. I think it was fun. He played songs that we know, at least for my generation. I'm 31. It felt like it was catered to me, and it's a fun place to be. The only person who I know hated it was probably Swiss Beats. <laughs> 14 songs. That is a that is a tight medley. Courtney Crowe to take it the FaceTime. <laughs> Another event that happens during Super Bowl weekend is the Waste Management Open, known as the People's Open. But this year, some of the people crossed the line with some pretty unhinged behavior. We know from Woodstock that volatile crowds, mud, and alcohol don't mix. Well, on Saturday, the third round, the Waste Management Open had to limit alcohol sales, had to close off some of the entrances because the crowd got out of hand in conjunction with the weather. You've got golfers snapping at spectators. You've got fans, if you want to call it that, doing snow angels in the bunker. This was an unhinged event, top to bottom. Gordy Crone in today's FaceTime and champion. She was an underdog going in. People said she had no chance, just like Kansas City. We're on a 23-day power said. break. Undefeated again.